Hey guys, Kev here, and it's time for a full review. And this one, man, this one is so surprising to me in a couple ways. Um, spoiling the video here, this is one of my favorite knives this year. Coming in under the gun here, but I don't know what it is about this knife. I just really, really love it. And knives just, you know, they speak to you when they speak to you, and that's just how it goes. And you can't ever tell looking at paper or looking at the knife, you know, um, on the internet. I even handled the prototype of this, so I knew I liked it, but I didn't think I liked it this much. I love it. Um, so this is the Fox Knives Chillin, C-H-I-L-L-I-N, designed by Jesper Voxnes of Denmark, made in Italy by Fox. This is M398 steel. See that there, M398. And a really nice carbon fiber, almost like a burlap looking carbon fiber. I obviously have a aftermarket clip on here from Lynch. This uh, comes with a wire clip. And there's a look at the knife. It is a steel liner lock. It is on ball, uh, ball bearings. It comes with steel bearings and a brass cage. I went ahead and upgraded that to Skifferoonies, of course. And I slightly tweaked the detent a little bit to give it a little more pop. Now, it was really good already. I just prefer even stronger, and I tried to make it a little stronger. Um, I barely touched it, but um, whatever I did, it feels fantastic now. So it was good before, though. So that really is a non-factor, but I want to obviously mention everything. I've carried this every single day since I got it, which has been, I don't know, a week and a half at this point. And it has been my main EDC every single day during that time. Uh, and I have absolutely enjoyed the shit out of it. And I really was putting this review off. I could have done the review after like two days. I just, you know, uh, at this point, you know, I just I carry the knife. I use the knife and I know pretty quickly my thoughts, right? It's rare that something changes after a couple days. Um, unless it's something unique or something, you know, that needs a little more attention. But this, I just didn't want to do the review because I didn't want to feel like it needs to come out of my pocket. And that's usually what happens when you, uh, when I review knives, right? Like I carry it and then I do the review or the video or whatever. And then it doesn't get carried anymore. And it ends up sitting in my knife case, a la Protec Malibu. This is like the fifth one I've owned. Every time I get one, I get excited. I carry it for like three days and then it just sits in my knife case and then I end up selling it. This one, I've tried to make a effort to carry a little bit more. And I really do love this one. This one has the strongest detent of any Malibu I've handled. Um, and I love that dark green color. I love that mother of pearl button. And it really is a sweet knife. Um, this one's in 20 CV. And they've gotten better and better with their, um, their edges, their grinds. This one's around 20, I think I measured it at like 22 or something like that. Um, so not super thick, but definitely good for my purposes. And I've just really enjoyed it. But it just sits in the knife case. And that happens to basically every knife. Uh, unless it's something insane. But even then, my mini FSD, I carried the shit out of. I still haven't done a video on this, have I? A review. Um carried the shit out of this for like two weeks after I got it. Now it's just sat in the case for another two weeks or three weeks and barely, barely sees pocket time, even hand time, so to speak. Um, that's just how it, it's just a thing, you know, with me at least. And, um, this, I just didn't want that to happen. So I kind of pushed it off, but I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I got to review this thing. So, I wanted you guys to know my thoughts. Um, I fucking love it. And that's pretty much the whole point of this uh, ramble here at the beginning. So let's talk about the normal stuff I try to talk about in reviews. And we'll start with aesthetics. And this puppy just looks cool. 
It's got a Nesmuk thing going on. It's got a Kukri thing going on, but it's still got the Vox thing going on. It kind of reminds me of like a elongated uh, sort of just better Vox Dapper, maybe. Um, I don't know if you guys see that at all, but it kind of has similar lines in my opinion. Um, but it has a hole for deployment, which I, you know, you miss on the dapper. It's a little bit larger, so it's good in hand, and it's not a freaking hatchet. Um, that's the biggest problem with the dapper is it's just ground so damn thick. Um, it has such a thick behind the edge profile for an EDC knife. For me to notice that is an issue. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not the need the ultra thin slicey knife guy, but if I notice it's thick, you got a problem. And that's how I feel about that knife. So, um, but this kind of reminds me of it. It reminds me less of say the F 5.5 from, uh, box. Pull that out. This is one of my favorite knives as well. Box just, you know, his, uh, aesthetic, his ergos, all of that stuff. The fact that he likes holes for deployment, liner locks that all kind of feeds into the fact that he's one of my favorite designers and kind of always has been this is the f5.5 from urban adc and you can see here size wise the chillin is a bit bigger um it's not a small knife the f5.5 is under three inches blade length it's just a taller knife so it doesn't feel quite as small um uh, but this is one of my favorite knives stay tuned i have a, a g10 one coming um uh, i think they did a black G10 version, which is really cool. Um, I picked one of those up. And something about Vox, man. You can just thumb flick the shit out of his knives. But he's got it set up perfectly for reverse flick. And the ergos for me are always, always on point. The jimping is always located in a good spot. And uh, this has always been one of my favorite knives. My favorite production knife, I think. Most recommended production knife, in my opinion. Um, but this has the same aspects that thumb hole just is set up. It's like a keyhole. It's set up to just pop it out with your thumb. Um, it's definitely easier right-handed. It just kind of, I don't know, my finger seats better right-handed and I can fire it. And then the reverse flick, same thing. It's got the same hole shape as I believe the, uh, Riv and the Nibbler and maybe the, uh, Biblio as well has that. Really nice. Does the Nimbus? I don't know. I think the Nimbus is a little bit different. Um, and then you have, uh, well, okay, we're talking about aesthetics. Sorry. You have the bulbous blade, but it still kind of comes down to a past the spear point. In my opinion, it comes past the spear point and turns into a sort of sheep's footy blade, right? I don't know what you call it once it gets down here. It kind of reminds me of something that uh, Colin would do. Um, Colin Mason Pierre CM knife designs kind of gives me those vibes where it's like kind of spear pointy, but it actually is lower down. So it's kind of a sheep's footy blade as well. Um, and I like that because I like having a low tip, right? Um, what else? Um, I don't know if this knife compares to it at all, but it just popped in my mind. The no, nah, see, that's like a straight spear point. But if this curved a little bit, it would it would definitely be similar, and you know it'd have to have a hole. But that's the Nasco Lander. Um, anyway, aesthetically, I think it's fantastic, and it's offered in many variations, which is cool. So, depending on what your bag is, you have options. So you can get this full decked out version in carbon fiber with M398 for 258 bucks, roughly. This is a Blade HQ exclusive, by the way. Uh, you can get a black washed version, so basically a blacked out one with carbon fiber, and that's the most expensive one around 278, I believe, 280. Um, then it comes down to the 258 for this one. Um, then you have. A titanium version, so it's like milled, really nicely milled titanium with a stone wash blade, and that one is 208, something like that. This one's got a sort of belt satin, machine satin on it. Um, so the stone wash with tie is 208. That's M398 as well. And then it gets a little weird. Um, from there, you drop down to like 197 or 192, and you get aluminum handles options are like a black with yellow collar and a blue i believe with a gray collar something like that with 
N690, which is a, a very popular steel for Fox. I think their customers, they have a, a very loyal customer base that loves that steel, I think, because they use it a lot. It's kind of like their base steel. It's kind of like the S30V for Fox, if that makes sense. For these Italian companies, N690 seems to be their go-to, and then they bump it to M390 for premium. Now, again, I want to repeat, this is M398, not M390, but um, usually M390 is their sort of premium upgrade. Um, so aluminum with S90B around 200, just under. Then you can get a um, micarta with, I don't know if it's a satin, I know, I think it's like a stone wash with micarta, but it's M398 again, and that one's like 158 which is interesting. That's probably your best bang for buck option you can get. And then the entry level version is a G10 with N690. And that one's like 147, I think, maybe something like that. So the range is cool for me in this. It, you know, it's about a hundred dollar swing. And, you know, you have your choices of G10, micarta, aluminum, titanium, carbon fiber. It's like five options right there for handle scales. You have options from stone wash to satin to black wash. Um, and then you have options of M398 and N690. Now, like all things when this happens, I always kind of want the one you can't get, right? I wanted that cool blue aluminum with M398. If they had had that, I would have bought it. Um, I don't mind aluminum, honestly. I'm starting to think aluminum might be something worth getting into for Devo just to see price-wise what that looks like. But if you get, like, good aluminum, I think it's, like, T660, uh, T whatever, that stuff's pretty expensive. It's not like that's just cheap shit you can get, right? And aluminum... That good aluminum is not far off from grade 5 titanium. So, I don't know. But something to think about. Um, one other thing we should dive into is the steel. So, M398. Um, I've done minor research. I've talked to some people that have done research. Uh, mainly NAF Sergeant or NAF. He, I believe, is also sending his chillin over to Transparent Knives to get tested. Because... As we all know, Italy is known for subpar heat treats on their M390. Um, and maybe that's why people like their N690, because they do it better. I'm not sure. But um, basically what I gather is that M398 has edge retention superior to M390. That's kind of the point of it. It's sort of in that realm of S90V. So like, if you look at 20CV... And M390, those are the same thing uh, formula-wise. One is Crucible, one is Bowler, right? Then you have S90V from Crucible, and then it looks like Bowler's kind of using M398 in that area. It's not the same like M390, 20CV, but they're similar. I'm told the edge retention is between like S90V and S110V, or no, S125V. Um, corrosion resistance is okay. It's like M390. And then where it takes a hit is toughness. And that's kind of the balance you play when it comes to steels, right? The higher you push one category out of the three, right? So you have edge retention, toughness, and corrosion resistance. You have the triangle, right? And when you push that, when you push that dot closer to one side, right? It's going to lower the other one. So if you want high edge retention, you're going to have to lose corrosion resistance or you're going to have to lose toughness, right? So you look at something like M4. It has amazing edge retention and it's tough as nails, but it's not corrosion resistant, right? You look at something like S110V. It has amazing edge retention. It's pretty corrosion resistant, but it's trash in the toughness category, right? S90V is a little bit of a better balance. You have that higher edge retention, good corrosion resistance, and it's like okay toughness. Not, not good by any means, but okay. And this M398 kind of falls into that category right there. It's for edge retention, and that's kind of its base. And then you're looking at some corrosion resistance and the toughness suffers a bit. But I think those steels are perfectly adequate for uh, EDC blades. And I think 
for me, they're very good uh, because I don't need ultra tough. I'm going to be cutting cardboard. I'm going to be cutting packaging. I'm going to be cutting through tape and fruit. And, you know, I'm not cutting through nails. And regardless of the steel I have, if I bang into a staple cutting through cardboard, it's probably going to chip whatever that is. So, you know, uh, that's kind of a quick rundown on M398. Is a newer steel, I believe, or at least being used in knives more recently. And it's getting a pretty good reception. Uh, we've seen a sharp by design knife nuts run of uh, the Apex in it. I believe it was the Apex or Mini Tempest. Um, we've seen, I believe, some Shiro's in it. Uh, we've seen now this Fox Knife in M398. Um, there's a Mule Team that just came out. The Fixed Blade from Spyderco in M398. Which means they're going to start utilizing it. Um, so it is starting to pop up more. The first time I ever saw it or had it was on my CKF Custom Knife Factory T15, which is an interesting flipper I got at Blade. No, I got it after Blade Show sometime last year. And I really liked the knife. Um, but that was M398, which is interesting. So anyway, there's the steel. Got my Dr. Pepper here. So we did aesthetics. Love it. Um, ergonomics. It's a little goofy because it's got that kukri thing going on. But if you hold it back here, it's very comfortable in the hand. Um, it's just something you kind of have to adjust to because it's not a straight line. It's more of a banana a boomerang, right? So you hold it like this, very comfortable in hand. Now, I do have this clip on it, which makes it a little more uncomfortable than it was with the wire clip. I will say I do not love their stock wire clips. I do not love green eggs and ham. I do not love them, Sam. I am. Um, I do not love the wire clip that Fox uses. I love wire clips, let me be clear. But the one that they use and some companies use, it has this like really, it sits up really high. And I don't know why they use that one. And then it kind of like has this big, I don't know, it's just like a hot spot. But uh, the lynch clip is pretty comfortable in hand. And then you have this choil-ish area right here, Vox style. And this is where I'm always locked in like this. And then I have my thumb on this beautiful jimping up here, Vox style, halfway up the blade uh, jimping. You can also get into a pinch grip like this. And um, yeah, the ergos, I think, are phenomenal on this knife. The only thing you might be able to point to is the clip being a little bit, you know, depending on which clip you have on there and everything like that. But it's ultra comfortable, feels good in the hand. It really feels locked in. And I like the shape of the knife, so it kind of has that curve down to it, and it makes it very usable. Now, you're not going to be utilizing, like, flat cuts, right? Uh, because this portion of the blade is going to be up, if that makes sense. Let me grab something to show you. So if I take this and I put the blade down on it, right... That back section of the blade is not touching the uh, paper there. And then the front section isn't either. So doing like these kind of like rocking cuts is not really going to work. One, because your, your hand's going to be getting in the way. So it's not really meant to be like a kitcheny knife. But if you need to cut through an apple, like something you're holding and you need to cut through it or whatever... It's really good for that, in my opinion. Uh, I've had to cut a couple of zip ties. I had some toys for my kid. And I kind of just got this sucker under there and just kind of popped it up. And it just kind of fed that zip tie in and, and took care of it. Um, so yeah, I guess we're talking about cutting at this point. This blade has been really, really good. It comes down to a relatively thin edge. I mean, I would not say it is thin. We can try to measure it. I've actually gotten a little better at this. Let me see. Just make sure we're zeroed. Okay. Let's see if I can get under there. Twenty one. Eighteen. 22 and i'm going pretty low i'm not you know if i'm up like right at the top there right where the bevel starts you know i'm hitting around 18 that to me when it comes to uh an italian knife is good i think 
18 to 22. I mean, that's like what we have on the stout. I think that's really good. You have a nice tall blade. It is a good full flat grind. Yeah, it's, I would call it a full, eh, it's not quite a full, well, yeah, just, eh, uh, arguably a full flat grind, really high flat grind. Um, so I think they did a great job because if you look at the stock, it is not the thinnest stock to begin with. Again, let's zero this out. Let's see if I can get it down here. 0 0.168, 0 0.15. So let's call it 0 0.15 stock, 0 0.16. So not the thinnest. I mean, you can see how bulky that is. And that's the thing I was talking about with the... Um, with the dapper is it, it was basically the same thickness like you can see here the stout is even a little bit thinner i know the stout is around 0 0.14 0 0.13 of an inch um if you look at the protect malibu a little bit thicker than that as well there and then if you look at something like the jaeger m these are very similar right the jaeger might even be a little bit thicker so there's a little bit of a gauge for you. One last one, the F5.5. And again, the F5.5 is very close, but maybe slightly thicker. Um, so you have a good stock, a nice tall grind, and it comes down to a good edge. And to me, it's an excellent cutter. I really have enjoyed it. One thing I really like is the way they did these pivot collars. The pivot screw and the tooled screw sit in there. And what you can do is kind of grab the knife like this. And it almost, it's just a tactile thing that you kind of get a grip there. And then you can utilize the knife in this grip for whatever you need. Um, and then I can also choke up like this right up onto the blade. And the way they chamfer this down or angled that down feels really good in the hand. You can also get up because you have such a tall blade. You can just get up on the blade completely. And now you have a nice pinch grip to do little detailed things. It's just a very good ergonomic knife and cutting knife. I've really enjoyed it. Um, carry, also phenomenal. I've carried this with the Lynch clip and the regular clip. It felt a little bit tight with the uh, wire clip, but I'm sure that would have broke in. And it probably varies from knife to knife because, you know, the wire tension. Uh, but with this Lynch clip, it's money in and out of the pocket. I've carried this front left pocket because it does have a reversible clip. Um, I've carried this front left pocket most of the time. The last couple of days I've been carrying it in my back right pocket because I've been carrying my chickadee, uh, one of my chickadees in the front left pocket in this Oak City leather, uh, leather supply clip slip. But I've been loving that. And I've been wanting to carry those, so I found a way to do that. And I uh, carry this in my back right pocket, so the blade is against the seam of my pants. And it carries great there as well. Had no issues or anything. Um, carry sounds. Sounds are excellent on this knife. I will admit, when I first got it, it did sound a little bit more janky, so to speak. Like, you would disengage, and it would clunk down to your nail, and you could just kind of feel all the balls rolling, and then it would kind of rattle closed a little bit, almost like a Kaiser that, you know, I've always said, the Kaiser rattle. Um, so I don't know if it was, A, the skips that I put in. I'm guessing the skips helped with the bearing roll and everything it's just super smooth now i mean you just can't feel a thing in there um, when you disengage it it just drops to your nail you don't hear a bunch of you know um and then now when it there's none of that rattling and that i'm guessing is it uh either i'm guessing it's because i took that lock bar and i gave it just a, a little bit more pressure so now when it clicks in it really sucks it in and that ball just hits home i don't know 
Um, it could also just be I took it apart. It could be the fact that there's a new clip. A lot of things can um, play into the fact that you have sounds. For instance, I have this clip on my Evo 2.0. Ever since I put that clip on there, it kind of has a little bit of a clank sound that I don't love. Um, the stock clip, it just kind of sucked it in and, and sounded normal. Um, but ever since I did whatever I did, it sounds phenomenal. I mean, this is a 8 out of 10. It really has a nice thwack, and it always had that, so that's nice deployment, thwack. Um, nice disengage, nice click. I'm a very uh, audi audible person when it comes to knives, and that sounds phenomenal. Um, sounds so action slash fidget factor so this knife has been absolutely incredible like i said from the first moment i got it the reverse flick has been money um it really has you can watch my unboxing and it only has gotten better with the slight adjustment i made unnecessary adjustment i want to make that clear i did not need it but I wanted it. Um, and that's just a me thing. I like a stronger, snappier detent. I don't want it to rip my nail off, but I want it to be really snappy. I don't want to feel like I could ever fail it. And I want it to feel like when I do the just break detent thing, that it kind of flies out and locks up. It doesn't just kind of leak out and just lock up. Um, this is very, very satisfying. You'll see the lockup um, is right there. It's about... Now it's creeping in on like 40%, probably partially because I gave it a little bit. Um, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, just to note, they did use a white ceramic detent ball, which is excellent. But it's odd that they then use steel ca uh, steel bearings. They're, it's a brass cage, but they use steel bearings. Just really weird to me that they do that. Um, the hardware, I believe, is steel. And the backspacer, I believe, is aluminum. Just want to note that before I forget. But yeah, the action's great. Fires out and then on close, swings to your nail, shakes down. It's not a guillotine, but it's phenomenal. There is no side to side, no up, eh, maybe a slight little bit up and down. Nothing that worries me. I spine whack tested it. Um, again, it does not guillotine. It will hit your nail and then just some smooth shaking. But it's never been like where I'm like, oh, it's too much shaking. It's very smooth on that shake. I can disengage it left-handed easily. So lefties fires really well. Reverse flick because you have the liner lock. Nothing in your way. You know, just fires out like that. Thumb, get in there with your thumb. Fires out easy as well. I wouldn't say it's difficult I usually probably just fi like give it a little bit of a load up like that um, right-handed you do have a little more clearance here as you'll see so you can get in there a little bit better but it works great left-handed um, either way but the reverse flick lefty is money because you have all that room there now right-handed reverse flick is fine as well and then disengaging lefty you have the room right here to get in and just pop that lock bar over just make sure you don't cut yourself because it does come down. If you go up higher, you'll get hit right here instead of with the edge. And then you shake down. Right-handed disengaging. Uh, if you come at it like this, boom, no problem. You just get in there, slide it out of the way, and you're good to go. If you do this move, it, there's a little less room than I'd ideally want. You can see it's not really cut back. But honestly, there's enough space in there, gap in there, that you kind of just... It works. Um, it's never been a situation where I'm like, oh, I wish, you know, it's it works perfectly. Yeah, it'd be cool if maybe there was a little bit more, but I don't think it really needs it. They definitely did a great job with putting some jimping on there. I think that's a big reason why it just catches you and you're good to go. So um, action is fantastic. Fidget factors out of the war out of, uh, off the charts. Sorry. Love it. Uh, overall, this knife is a home run from Fox, and you know what? I'm really happy that this is the case. I've been, I've been on record, and I've been very, very hard on the Italian knife companies to the point where I've shit on them pretty hard. And 
for good reason. Their QC has been absolutely atrocious. Um, when it comes to giant mouse knives they've done or their own knives, like the Fox, the Baby Cores, and the Isanzos, the MKM ones, Lion Steel's stuff, it, it, they've just been really bad QC-wise when it comes to detent, right, with the uh, consistency of detent, the centering, uh, when it comes to um, heat treat, it's been poor, just a lot, a lot of issues, and it's been a shame because... It's kind of cool to think that Italy is making knives for decent prices. And it's just like, oh, we can't really buy them because they suck. We'd rather buy China knives. And that's kind of sad, right? Like, Because if I could put my money towards Italy instead, I would. But like, they're not reliable. But this is a really good step in that direction. I know three or four other people that have gotten these now, and I have not heard any of the usual complaints. So I'm hoping those don't start cropping up. I'm hoping once that uh, steel is tested that it comes out, you know, uh, clean. It comes out at a good rating. Um, and then it will be really cool, and hopefully it's a step in that direction. It's not just one model that, you know, is done right, but... Um, hopefully Fox starts, you know, being consistent with this. And if that happens, then, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll buy more because I absolutely love this knife. Um, this will 100% be on my list of best knives this year. Will it win? I don't know, but it is going to be very high on the list. I mean, I am putting it up there this year with the TW price Dawn. I'm putting it up there this year with... The Mini Tempest, the Baby Barlow. Um, I'm really loving the uh, Tonic from Best Tech, the uh, Factor from Winter Blade. It is in this category. Now, I don't think anything's going to come up, creep up, and beat the Mini FSD. And that's more of a custom, but that would be in there. Um, I think that's it for new knives this year that i have uh, i don't know if you can count the towel compact because it's a new model technically it's just different sides but that would be in there really enjoying this one and my baby barlow is over there um and then if we're gonna count slip joints every jack wolf knife uh, i'll do a separate i think slip joint video it's just gonna be all jack wolves which will be weird but whatever um but yeah these are like your knives of the year contenders this year um and this guy is 100 percent on that list and um you know i think it's pretty high on the list so that's what i think of the fox knives chillin designed by vox and um it's an exclusive of blade hq i will link it down below it should still be available they usually with these um what is that oh with these exclusives, they usually have a good quantity of them, especially these Fox knives. They're probably not like just, you know, getting bought up off the shelves real fast. So you should have a shot at one of these if you're interested in picking one up. And uh, I highly recommend it. So 30 minutes later, that is the end of the chillin' review. And I couldn't be happier with this knife. So let me know what you guys think down below. I'm very happy to have a fox knife on the table in this sort of um, positive light. It really does make me happy. So I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.